is about calcium homeostasis, which is the way that the blood levels of calcium are kept at a constant level. When you're talking about calcium homeostasis, it's important to recognize that there are three different ways that calcium gets into the body and leaves the body. In the diet, the way that calcium comes in is through the small intestine. Calcium can be absorbed into the bloodstream, and this is one way that calcium levels in the bloodstream are regulated, is by entry. Any additional calcium that's not absorbed leaves the body through the feces. Calcium is stored in bone, and so that means that when the body needs it, it can pull calcium out of the blood, out of the bone into the blood, and likewise when blood calcium levels are high, it can be taken out of the blood by depositing it into the bone. The other tool that the body has to regulate blood calcium levels is excretion through the urine. Calcium is a ion, it's water soluble, and so if um, there is calcium in the blood, it can be um, um, excreted through the kidneys into um, the urine. Under the appropriate circumstances, the kidneys can take back up that calcium from the urine and can also stop further excretion of loss of calcium by that route. So when we're talking about calcium homeostasis, all three of these mechanisms um, for changing the blood calcium levels um, in the blood come into play. The uh, balance of calcium levels in the blood is maintained by three different hormones. They are the parathyroid hormone, calcitriol, and calcitonin. Parathyroid hormone is made by the parathyroid gland and it's abbreviated PTH. Calcitriol is the active form of vitamin D. Unlike most hormones, which are usually small peptides that are made and released into the bloodstream, calcitriol is unusual because it's actually a modified form of cholesterol. It's a lipid. The active form of vitamin D um, is made from a form that is stored in adipose tissue and in the liver, um, and the synthesis, of, the synthesis of calcitriol actually happens in the kidneys. Calcitonin is a traditional peptide hormone that is released from the thyroid. So this diagram shows how those three hormones regulate blood calcium levels under two dis different scenarios, when blood calcium levels are low and when blood calcium levels are high. So let's start with what happens when your blood calcium levels drop. Two hormones are involved, parathyroid hormone and calcitriol. The first thing that happens when blood calcium drops is that the parathyroid hormone is released, goes out into the bloodstream and circulates, and when it reaches the bone and when it reaches the kidneys, that is where it has its effects. So in the bone, what it does is it inhibits the osteoblasts, those are the bone cells that are building bone, and it stimulates the osteoclasts to degrade calcium and phosphate and release it from the bone. Um, in the kidneys, the kidneys, it does two things. It stimulates the kidneys to um, uh, reabsorb the calcium from the urine and to block secretion of calcium into further calcium into the urine. In it also causes the kidney tubule cells to start making the calcitriol, which is the active form of vitamin D. So this happens first, and then once the calcitriol is 
circulating, the calcitriol has an effect on the intestine. So this is a bit of a delay. What calcitriol does is it causes the intestines to um, take up more calcium from the food than it normally would. And in a separate video, I'm going to talk about both how calcitriol is formed and also how calcitriol has this effect of increasing absorption from the intestine. So the net effect is calcium comes from the bone. Calcium is no longer excreted in the urine and more calcium is brought in from the intestine. And the net effect is that the blood calcium levels should be restored to the, to the normal level. Now when blood calcium levels get too high, then that is the point at which calcitonin kicks in. Remember that calcitonin is secreted by the thyroid gland, which is connected um, in space, they're right next to each other. Um, but it has, um, it's a separate organ. So the parathyroid gland causes the release of calcitonin when blood calcium levels are too high. It glows, it goes into the bloodstream. And the primary effect of calcitonin on the system is in the bone. The effect of calcitonin on the bone is the opposite of what it was that PTH had on the bone. Namely that it stimulates the um, activity of the osteoblasts, so now you're building bone, and it inhibits the activity of the osteoclasts to keep them from breaking it down. So more building, less breaking down. The net effect is that the calcium is taken from the bloodstream into the bone for storage, and that depletes that excess calcium from the blood. Okay, so there's a lot of facts here, um, and this diagram just summarizes everything that I want you to know about calcium homeostasis. So take a minute and um, see if you can learn as much from this figure as you can. And then I'm going to give you just a little self-test so that you can rehearse these facts. So let's start by seeing what you remember about where these hormones are made. So this is a matching question. Match the hormones to the places where they're made. The parathyroid hormone is made from the parathyroid. Calcitonin is made by the thyroid gland and calcitriol is made by the kidneys. So let's see if we can match the hormones to their net effect on what they do to blood calcium levels. Parathyroid hormone and calcitriol are paired. What they both do is they increase the blood calcium levels, although they do so by different mechanisms, and you know that's coming up. Calcitonin is the one that decreases the blood calcium levels. So now let's get into the mechanism. How is it that these three hormones have their um, net effect? So let's start with the parathyroid hormone. Remember that it's made by the parathyroid and that it causes the blood calcium levels to increase. How does it do that? The parathyroid hormone, in order to cause the blood calcium levels to increase, will stimulate the bone breakdown which is caused by the osteoclasts. It inhibits the cells that build bone, which are the osteoclasts. 
in the kidney, what it causes is two different things. Calcium is reabsorbed and prevented from going out into the urine. And it also is the organ um, that is stimulated to activate vitamin D to calcitriol. Um, in the intestine, though, the parathyroid doesn't have any effect. So let's work on calcitriol now. What does calcitriol do? Calcitriol has no effect on kidneys or on bone, although there is some evidence that calcitriol has a, an effect on setting up the osteoclast and osteoblast populations. Um, but that happens early in life, um, and so its effect is indirect. Um, Calcitriol doesn't have an effect on the kidneys. In fact, the kidneys have an effect on calcitriol. It's the opposite relationship. What calcitriol does is it stimulates absorption of calcium from the small intestine. Calcitonin. What does calcitonin do? Yep, you got it right. Calcitonin has the main effect on the bone only. And it has the reverse effect of the parathyroid hormone. So it stimulates the osteoblasts, inhibits the osteoclasts. Remember, osteoblasts take calcium out of the blood. And since calcitonin is the only hormone that responds to high blood calcium levels, um, these are the bone cells that are going to um, store that excess calcium.